Welcome to the prayer and praise service for this month from the benefice of Beedale. We have a new baby in the family. Um, means many changes, of course. Great newness and new beginnings. Today, today's service is um, based around, well, new things new ways of relationship, new ways of doing community. These are the themes we're going to dwell on today and we have um, a guest speaker from Scargill. So let me begin with just uh, a simple prayer as we prepare ourselves to uh, pray and to praise. A God who makes all things new, help us to live in new ways in these strange times and in Jesus' name. Amen. In the excitement of new meeting, may God befriend us with hope. In the loyalty of companionship, may God befriend us with trust. In the grief of missing loved ones, may God befriend us with comfort. In the wonder of friendship, may God befriend us with joy. To bring him praise Come all and tune your hearts To sing to the morning star of grace From the shifting shadows of the earth We will lift our eyes to him Where steady arms of mercy reach To gather children Let every tongue rejoice One 
Hi, my name's Phil and uh, I'm privileged to be a member of the Scargill community, which I have been now for almost well, over 10 years since it reopened. And many of you will probably have heard of Scargill and have visited it. And uh, we are a Christian community here. We live together, uh, we eat together, we pray together, we fall out together, we forgive, and uh, we are at heart a Christian community wanting to offer God's hospitality. Uh, that's what we're about here at Scargill. Um, and I think as we begin to come out of this lockdown, of this pandemic that we've been in, I think God is wanting to do a new thing. And I do think it is all around Christian community. It says in Isaiah 43, 19, can't you see I am doing a new thing? In fact, what I think God is saying to us, I have always done community and I would love you to join in with me in being community. So what does that look like? Well, I think one of the things I want to say is that as we develop deeper relationships with one another, we become the people that God wants us to be. So I'm just going to show you an icon. This will be a very familiar icon to many of you. And here it is. It's uh, a, an icon, uh, a copy of the Rublev icon of the Old Testament, three angelic figures visiting Abraham, you'll remember it, from Genesis 18. And it's often called uh, the Trinity, depicting the Trinity. And, um, and here they are. This is the... Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, when I was looking and doing some research just recently on this wonderful icon, it came very clear to me uh, as a, that something wonderfully spoke to me, and that was this bit just here. This bit just here, in fact. And when the experts looked at this icon, you know, the eye experts having a look, how, they, how the uh, Rublev did it. They found a, um, a substance here that was like glue. And what they reckon Rublev first put there was a mirror. Isn't that wonderful? So when you think about the life of the Trinity, and when you would gaze upon this, and gaze on to the fact that we are called to participate in the life or what the early fathers used to call the dance of the Trinity, the dance of the Trinity, uh, you would see yourself. It's like we were the fourth member to join in this wonderful uh, uh, act of grace, the movement of grace that we are called to be a part of. And so you'd see yourself. Isn't that wonderful? And so community, I think, when lived out under the grace of God, is a community that where we discover who we are, and we discover that we are God's beloved. We discover those words that the Father said to his Son at his baptism, as the Spirit descended upon him, You are my Son, with whom I love with whom I am well pleased. Isn't that wonderful? You own your fear and all your self-loathing You own the voices inside of your head You own the shame and reproach of your failure it's time to own your belovedness You've owned your past and how it's defined You've owned everything everybody else says It's time to hear what your father has spoken It's time to own your belovedness Says you're mine. I smiled when I made you. I find you beautiful in every way. My love for you is fierce and unending. I'll come to find you, whatever it takes, my beloved. You own the mess you see in the mirror. Blinded by 
wonderful in every way. My love for you is fierce and unending. I'll come to find you, whatever it takes, my beloved. Flame dancing spirit, come, sweep us off our feet and dance us through our days. Surprise us with your rhythms, dare us to try new steps, explore new patterns and new relationships. Release us from old routines to swing in abandoned joy and fearful adventure. And in the intervals, rest us in your still centre. So community, why should we think about being community? Well, I think it's a visible expression of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit led those first Christians into community. Just think of Acts chapter two, one of the works of the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit was leading people into deeper relationships with one another. And we want to get away from the sense that it was all wonderful and perfect and everything was hunky-dory. It was far from it. They had to work through many issues um, as they decided to live closer and deeper together. But I think that it's a visible sign of the kingdom. It's the taste of the future in the now. Taste of the future in the now. And it's about how we live and love. Um, and it's about not so much what we do, but how we are being. And so, so uh, community is about relationships with God, one another, and creation. And I would want to say that the kingdom fundamentally is about wholesome, loving, uh, grace-filled relationships. And I believe that community is the Holy Spirit's antidote to individualism and consumerism. It's actually a way in which we can become disciples of Jesus, more authentic disciples of Jesus. There's that wonderful verse from John 12, verse 24. It says, I truly, truly, I say it unto you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so community is an opportunity to begin to bear this kingdom fruit. A fruit where relationships are central. And it's also about belonging. And uh, I don't know about you, but belonging is really important, but it's about kingdom belonging. It's not about keeping people out, it's about bringing people in. 
where diversity is embraced. Now, St Anthony was a great desert father, but they lived in community in the desert. And he said, our life and our death is with our neighbour. Our life and our death is with our neighbour. And uh, I heard someone speak, I think it was uh, Graham Crane many years ago, said that what we need to do is have roots down so walls can come down. And one day, uh, one way in which our roots go down is in our relationships with one another, with Jesus at the centre. And then the walls can be come down. Come down. Those walls that we've built up against one another, those walls with which we put up against others in the community. So community is a way, a wonderful way of expressing the kingdom, a visible sign. Jesus, be the center. Be be my
we want to say to you that we want you to be the fire. Lord, we don't want to, as we so often do, look to our own strengths and uh, our own capabilities. We want you to be the fire. We want you to be the reason. We want to do things in your strength as we consider standing for you and proclaiming boldly. Lord, we want to do it in your strength. God's Dry Stone Wall by Dave Hopwood So many stones, small, large, smooth, jagged, new, old, fitting into this craggy jigsaw body, different sizes, different shapes. All vital, all part of a bigger picture. Not a construction designed to keep others out, but a welcoming, generous temple. A kind of place to call home, a lighthouse, a divine landmark, a place where all varieties of stone may fit together. Standing on the kind of rock that many overlook, the kind of rock that will stand forever. Lord our God, look upon the walls that we have built, which separate us from you and from one another. Forgive us and heal us. Help us to overcome all walls of division and make us one in you. Amen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place.
So community, why is it such a good thing? Well, I think it's a real place where we can be authentic. There's one phrase I love, and that's called a grace-filled fragility. And so in community, we come with all the stuff of our lives, all the stuff that, we, that holds us back, and it's a place where we can begin to deal with that. It's a place where we can truly be ourselves and vulnerable. And it's where God can shape us and change us. I also think about community, and I think about it here at Scargill, that it's a celebration. And community is a celebration of the kingdom. It's like a wedding feast. And I think one thing we can learn about communities is the way that they learn to celebrate. Here at Scargill, we love to celebrate. We'll find anything really, where we can eat cake and celebrate. It's a sign, again, of the kingdom, the wedding feast. And I would say that every single community, and ours here is, is hospitality, has a common demanding task. I wonder what your common demanding task will be as you go forward. What's the mission? And I think one of the things that Look, uh, helps community is having a rhythm of prayer, and I think this is something that doesn't ha doesn't happen ju just doesn't happen in the life together in a community like Scargill. It can happen in a dispersed community. It can happen in a church community. That rhythm of prayer, prayer is what's going on in the Trinity, and we are slipping into the stream of life. I wonder what a rhythm of prayer would look like for you. And then there's the rule of life. And here we have a rule of life that we call a pathway, where we keep Jesus at the centre, where we try our very best to be open to the Spirit, that the love of the Father and the grace of the Father can be revealed. Archbishop Stephen, just a few weeks ago, wrote that the church in the future needs to be simpler, humbler, and bolder. And I think community is a way in which the church can take those wonderful words, simpler, humbler, and bolder, and see them lived out, and that people can be drawn in, drawn in to the amazing grace and love and forgiveness of God. Thoughts on Community by Henri Nouwen Community is like a large mosaic. Each little piece seems so insignificant. One piece is bright red, another cold blue or dull green, another warm purple, another sharp yellow, another shining gold. Some look precious others ordinary, some look valuable, others worthless, some look gaudy, others delicate. We can do little with them as individual stones except compare them and judge their beauty and value. When, however, all these little stones are brought together in one big mosaic, portraying the face of Christ, who would ever question the importance of any one of them? If one of them, even the least spectacular one, is missing, the face is incomplete. Together, in the one mosaic, each little stone is indispensable and makes a unique contribution to the glory of God. That's community a fellowship of little people who together make God visible in the world. Jesus said, Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognise that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. And all the believers lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources 
so that each person's need was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful, as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. In the power of the Holy Spirit, and through Jesus Christ our Saviour, let us pray to our God. 
to those who are cut off from friends because they suffer illness or disability which makes social interaction difficult or because unemployment has severed the daily routine of working with colleagues. God, God companion, companion of all, all offer, offer the, the hand, hand of, of friendship. friendship. To those who nurture friendship in unlikely places, finding support and community in hospital wards or prison blocks, or deprived areas where the shared struggle helps community to survive. God, God companion, companion of all, all offer, offer the, the hand, hand of, of friendship. friendship. To those who are separated from friends, where distance has cut former ties, where work or new relationships cause isolation, for those moving to new areas, needing to make connections and build networks. God, God companion of all, offer the hand of friendship to those making friendships in the midst of diversity, crossing barriers of race or culture, class or age, finding connections and common ground that increase understanding and empathy, and discovering differences that enrich their sharing. God, God companion, companion of all, all offer, offer the hand, hand of friendship. friendship. To those whose friends have turned away forgetting to visit or failing to keep in touch in the stress and pressure of daily life or rejecting them because of their way of life, turning friendship to condemnation and betrayal. God, God companion, companion of all, all offer the, the hand of friendship. friendship. For those in a church seeking to offer friendship, looking beyond the familiar group and language to welcome and befriend the stranger, God, God companion, companion of all, all offer, offer the, the hand, hand of, of friendship. friendship. Amen. Amen. Christ is the world in which we move. Christ the
Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. kingdom. meet, wherever we greet, wherever we take a seat, whenever we eat, may it be in the company of Christ. And so his blessing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all and all who we gather to in these future weeks and months. Amen.
Street.